And so the plot thickens. Uh, we're now at Act 3, Scene 4 of Othello. Uh, my name's Cathy Williams de Vries, and uh, I've been reading through and analysing the play Othello. At this stage of the play, Desdemona is seeking out Cassio because uh, she wants to um, intervene with uh, intervene for him with Othello to get his job back. And uh, Desdemona finds out that she's lost the handkerchief, and of course Othello's not uh, not terribly happy about that because it had been a gift from his mother. And of course Iago the whole time is uh, is in there. Actually, I don't think Iago's in this one, but uh, oh yes, he is. He comes in. Um, He's talking, he's talking, Iago's talking with Desdemona and Cassio. Um, and then the final part of the scene, uh, Cassio gives the handkerchief, which had been dropped by Desdemona and stolen by Iago, uh, to his uh, lover, Bianca. And this is where all the, this is where the fun starts in the next act, when um, Othello observes um, Bianca giving back the handkerchief to Cassio. Um, so brilliant, brilliant. Very crucial little scene. Now we start with Desdemona, Amelia and a clown and there's a lot of uh, fun on the word lies because it means either lies as in lie down or resides and lies as in tell a falsehood. So um, the clown, and these scenes were inserted by Shakespeare just to, to liven the mood a little bit uh, and to show his, uh, how good a wordsmith he is. So Desdemona's with Amelia and uh, a clown and she's uh, trying to find out where um, Lieutenant Cassio is. So Desdemona says, do you know Syrah? Um, where Lieutenant Cassio lies. I dare not say he lies anywhere. Why, man? He's a soldier, and for me to say a soldier lies, tis stabbing. So in this case, Desdemona meant, where does he lay down? And uh, the clown takes it as he's telling a false, you know, to say a soldier tells a falsehood, tis, tis as bad as a stabbing. And so she, she clarifies it. Go to where lodges he? And the clown says, to tell you where he lodges is to tell you where I lie. Can anything be made of this? I know not where he lodges, and for me to devise a lodging and say he lies there, or he lies there, were to lie, tell a falsehood, in my own throat. <laughs> Very clever. Can you inquire him out and be edified by report? I will catechise the world for him, that is, make questions and buy them answer. Seek him, bid him come thither, tell him I have moved my lord on his behalf, and hope all will be well. To do this is within the compass of man's wit, and therefore I will attempt the doing it. And Desdemona says to Amelia, Where should I lose the handkerchief, Amelia? I know not, madam. Believe me, I would rather have lost my purse full of crusados, uh, gold coins, and but my noble moor is true of mine, and made so no such baseness as jello creatures, je jealous creatures are. It were enough to put him to ill thinking. So Desdemona doesn't know that Othello's been poisoned by Iago into an insane jealousy. But she says that, you know, even my losing the handkerchief uh, isn't going to look terribly good. Is he not jealous? Who he? I think the son where he was born drew all such humours from him. So she has no idea. Look where he comes. I will not leave him now till Cassio be called to him. How is it with you, my lord? And Othello says, uh, Well, my good lady, oh, hardness to dissemble, how do you, Desdemona? Well, my good lord, Give me your hand, this hand is moist, my lady. And Desdemona says, It has felt no age, nor known no sorrow. Othello says, uh, This argues fruitfulness and a liberal heart. Um, so it demonstrates fertility, but perhaps a loose heart. Hot, hot and moist, this hand of yours requires a sequester from liberty, fasting and prayer, much castigation, exercise devout, for here's a young and sweating devil here that commonly rebels. Tis a good hand, a frank one. You may indeed say so, for that was the hand that gave away my heart. A liberal hand, the heart of old gave hands. 
The hearts of old gave hands, but our new heraldry is hands, not hearts. In this case, the joining of hands doesn't signify the joining of hearts. Because, uh, well, a lot of marriages in those days uh, weren't for love. There were alliances between families. I cannot speak of this. Come now, your promise. What promise, Chuck? Uh, that's an endearment, um, short form of woodchuck. I have sent to bid Cassio come speak with you. Othello says, I have a salt and sorry room offends me. Lend me thy handkerchief. Here, my lord, that which I gave you, I have it not about me. Not, no, faith, my lord. And Othello explains, That's a fault. That handkerchief did an Egyptian to my mother give. She was a charmer and could almost read the thoughts of people. A charmer means a sorceress. She told her why she kept it would make her amiable and subdue my father entirely to her love. But if she lost it or made a gift of it, my father's eye should hold her loathed, and his spirits should hunt after new fancies. She dying gave it me, and bid me, when my fate would have me wived, to give it to her. I did so, and take heed in it. Make it a darling like your precious eye, to lose it or to give it away, or give to away, with such perdition as nothing else could match. Is it possible? Thala says, tis true, there's magic in the web of it. A civil, uh, in this case a uh, female prophet, that had numbered in the world the sun to course 200 compasses, in other words she was 200 years old, in all her prophetic fury sowed the work. The worms were hallowed that did breed the silk, and it was dyed in mummy, uh, the fluid drained from mummified bodies, which is supposedly magical, which the skillful conserved of maidens' hearts. In faith, is it true? Most veritable, therefore look to it well. Then would to God I'd never seen it. Ha, wherefore, for. Why do you speak so startlingly and rash? Is it lost? Is it gone? Speak, is it out of the way? Heaven bless us, say you. It is not lost, but what and if it were? How? I say it is not lost. Fetch it, let me see it. Why, so I can, sir, but I will not now. This is a trick to put me from my suit. Pray you, let Cassio be received again. Fetch me the handkerchief, my mind misgives. Come, come, you'll never meet a more sufficient man. The handkerchief, I pray, talk me of Cassio, the handkerchief. A man that all his time hath founded his good fortunes on your love, shared dangers with you. The handkerchief. In faith you are to blame. Swoons, uh, that's a short form of God's wounds, which was an expletive. Is not this man jealous? I ne'er saw this before. Sure there's some wonder in this handkerchief. I am most happy in the loss of it. So, Othello swears and leaves, and this is Desdemona talking to Amelia. Tis not a year or two shows us a man. They are all but stomachs, and we all but food. They eat us hungrily, and when they are full, they belch us. <sighs> nice to see the women getting one back on the men. Iago and Cassio come in. Look you, Cassio and my husband. Iago says to Cassio, there's no other way, tis she must do it, and lo, the happiness, go and importune her. How now, good Cassio, what's the news with you? Madam, my former suit, I do beseech you that by your virtuous means I may again exist and be a member of his love, whom I with all the office of my heart entirely honour. I would not be delayed, if my offence be of such mortal kind, that nor my service past, nor present sorrows, nor purposed merit in future, futurity can ransom me into his love again. But to know so must be my benefit. So shall I clothe me in forced content and shut myself up in some other course to fortune's arms. So he's thinking that, uh, I mean, it wasn't such a bad thing he did really. He just got drunk and picked a fight. And I think Othello's overreacted, especially when, uh, especially given how Iago's poisoned Othello against Cassio and, and uh, against his wife Desdemona. <laughs> Alas, thrice gentle Cassio, my advocation is not now in tune uh, with Othello. My lord is not my lord, nor should I know him were he in favour as in humour altered. So help me, every spirit sanctified, as I have spoken for you all my best, and stood within the bank blank of his displeasure for my free speech. You must a while be patient. What I can do, I will, 
and more I will then for myself I dare. Let that suffice you. So Othello's changed and uh, probably uh, in, uh, where, where it uh, pertains to Cassio as well. So, um, so she's currently in the bad books with Othello. She doesn't know why. But um, she's saying be patient because, uh, is my lord angry? He went hence but now, and certainly in strange unquietness. Can he be angry? I have seen the cannon whence it hath blown his ranks into the air, and like the devil from his very arm, puffed like his own brother. And is he angry? Something of moment then. I will go meet him. There's matter in it indeed if he be angry. So that's, that's Iago. So he's seen, um, he's seen Iago angry, um, and he's, uh, he's going to seek him out. I prithee do so. Something sure of state, either from Venice or some unhatched practice made demonstrable here in Cyprus to him, hath puddled his clear spirit, and in such cases men's natures wrangle with inferior things, though great ones are their object. Tis even so, for let our finger ache, and it induces our other healthful members even to a sense of pain. So what she's saying here is, uh, men's natures wrangle with inferior things, though great ones are their objects. So she's thinking maybe that uh, there's a larger issue to do with um, Othello's um, warlike activities. Um, um, but uh, he's taking it out on her. Tis even so, for let our finger ache, and it induce our other healthful members even to a sense of pain. Now we must think men are not gods, nor all of them look for such reservancy as fit the bridal. So, uh, passion, uh, you know, you can't expect the honeymoon to go on forever. Uh, so, no, nor all of them look for such const observancy as fits the bridal. In other words, the wedding. Beshrew me much, Amelia, I was, unhandsome warrior as I am, arraigning his unkindness with my soul. But now I find I had suborned the witness, and he's indicted falsely. She's... So pray heaven it be state matters as you think, and no conception nor no jealous toy concerning you. Alas, the day I give him no cause, I never gave him cause. But jealous souls will not be answered so. They are not ever jealous for the cause, but jealous for their jealous. It is a monster begot upon itself, born on itself. Heaven keep the monster from Othello's mind. Lady, I mean, this is the, the green-eyed monster. I will go seek him. Cassio, walk here about. If I do find him fit, I'll move your suit and seek to effect it at my uttermost. I humbly thank your ladyship. So Desdemona and Amelia exit. And Bianca, the courtesan, um, Cassio's lover, enters. And uh, this sets up. This sets up the next act as well. Save you, Frank Cassio. What make you from home? How is it with you, my fair, most fair Bianca? In face, sweet love, I was coming to your house. And I was going to your lodging, Cassio. What? Keep a week away, seven days and nights, eight score, eight hours, and lovers absent hours more tedious than the dial eight score times, O oh, weary reckoning. Um, this, this also mirrors Romeo and Juliet when they were parted, that uh, keep a week away. Um, Seven days and night, eight score, eight hours, 88 hours. And lovers' absent hours more tedium, tedious than the dial eight score times. So time tends to go eight score times slower um, in lovers' hours. Hasn't seen it for a week. Pardon me, Bianca, I have this while with leaden thoughts have been pressed, but I shall in a more continue at times strike off this score of absence. Sweet Bianca. Take me this work out, and he gives the Desdemona's napkin. O oh, Cassio, whence came this? Tis some, this is some token from a newer friend. To the felt absence now I feel a cause. Is it come to this? Well, well. Go to, woman. 
Throw your vile guesses in the devil's teeth from whence you have them. You are jealous now that this is from some mistress, some remembrance. No, by my faith, Bianca. Well, who, whose is it? I know not, neither. I found it in my chamber. I like the work well, ere it be demanded as like and enough at will. Uh, when, it, when someone demands it, when the owner's found, I would have it copied. Take it and do it, and leave me for this time. Leave you, wherefore, I do attend here on the general, and think it no addition on my wish to have him see me womaned. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't want Bianca to uh, be seen as his woman in front of Othello. Why, I pray you, not that I love you not, but that you do not love me, I pray you, bring me on the way a little, and say if I shall see you soon at night. Tis but a little way that I can bring you, for I attend here, but I'll see you soon. Tis very good, I must be circumstanced. So this is a crucial little scene, because um, Iago has, uh, uh, has um, Othello talk to Cassio, but then spy on him. And, uh, and uh, Cassio is talking about this woman and uh, to, to Iago and, and saying what a pain she is. And, uh, and then it's discovered that uh, I think Bianca comes back and gives the, uh, and gives the, the handkerchief back, I think. Um, and uh, then it's all downhill from there. <laughs> So uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's Act Three. Please join me for Act Four. Soon, soon enough.